Hello, and welcome to this very special episode of The Sausage Factory. The Sausage Factory, as you know, is just a bunch of guys sitting around talking about movies. Today we are celebrating Valentine's Day in style with a very special live commentary for the 80s slasher classic, I Bloody Valentine. Yep. With me tonight, with me tonight, I've got Orc. What's going on, Orc? What's up, homies? How's it going? YOLO swag to the max. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, how's how's the weather up there in, in, in Canada, sir? Uh, it's um, very, very cold and <laughs> lots of snow. But it always is like that. <laughs> this is Canada. The orcs Canada, come at you from, uh, from Malibu, so... Orgos know my cold weather. <laughs> I, got, I got my well, Paul was, deck. Well, Paul, I was talking to Paul before the show, and I said, man, it's cold here. It's 25 degrees. And Paul goes, you think 25 degrees is cold? <laughs> <laughs> 40 below. Uh, also, with 40 below. That's cold. That's, that's real cold. cold. Yeah. Also with me tonight is Jay the Stingray. What's going on, Jay? Hello, hello. I'm happy to be here with this one. I'm really excited. Big fan of this film. What are we, what are we drinking tonight, Jay? <clears throat> this is some community French roast. It is a dark blend. Ah, that's Sweet. a good idea. <laughs> I'll be right back. I'm getting my coffee, okay? <laughs> yeah, go for it, man. Go for it. Uh, also with me tonight is the professor, B-Movie Mike. What's going on, Mike? Hey, what's up, guys? Uh, unfortunately, Rambo couldn't be with us tonight, so I'm representing the Mellow Yellow instead. Oh, awesome. <laughs> I love my bloody Valentine. Yeah, it's an honor to have Paul with us, and I can't wait to get started. Oh, yeah. Yeah, big shout-out to Rambo Raff, who couldn't be with us tonight. He's with us in spirit, though. He's with us in spirit. Uh, also with me tonight is B. Jr. How's it going, Barry? Hey, what's on? going on there, guys? Really looking forward to this commentary. Thanks for inviting me. Rock on. Oh, yeah. And uh, Rajo is with us. Um, I think he's working on maybe some technical issues, so hopefully he'll get those ironed out. Uh, I'm a, I, of course, am your moderator, Pizal, and uh, we are honored tonight to be joined by one of the stars of the film My Bloody Valentine, Mr. Paul Kelman, TJ himself, is with us. How's it going, Paul? Well, not bad. I'm glad to be Thanks here. Thanks a lot for yeah, well, thanks a lot for joining us, man. We really appreciate it. Well, you're welcome. My pleasure. <laughs> Going to talk about My Bloody Valentine tonight, a movie that we all we all know and love and a movie that you were a part of. So, I mean, it's a very special occasion. Um, we've all got our – we're watching the theatrical version of the film tonight, people. So you guys get out the theatrical version. Pop it in your DVD or Blu-ray player. We've got ours queued up to 0, 0.00 at the very beginning of the film. I'll give you guys a few minutes to um, get that all queued up. And uh, uh, in the meantime, um, I'm going to ask Paul a quick question. Um, back when I first messaged you about coming on the show and doing a live commentary with us, and I told you that we would all be watching the film, and everybody at home would probably be watching the film as well. You said, Shh, there can't be that many copies of My Bloody Valentine out there. And my response was, dude, it's a classic. <laughs> so are, are you, are, are you, have you not kept up with the film over the years? Are you not really aware of the film's status among horror fans? Well, I am. As of about a year ago, I, uh, when I opened my Facebook page, uh, suddenly I had this influx of fans, which taught me that something's going on here. <laughs> so, yeah, I, I'm up to date now. Um, I think we have over seven or 800 uh, fans on my site, my Facebook page, which is all in, like, in the last year. I don't know how they find me, but they do. <laughs> and uh, at first I thought, you know, I, I had a Shatner moment, you know, where I kind of thought, well, get a life. <laughs> and then 
I don't know. I, there were so many people from so many places, like all around the world. It was just uh, after a while, and all these were like really nice people. I mean, these were people that really liked the movie, and they they liked what I did, in it. and it, everybody was just so nice. You know, it, it was it became humbling, is what happened. And uh, so yeah, I accepted it. You know, I mean, for me, it's something that I did a long, long time ago. You know, and. Um, it kind of disappeared for a while. I thought after it was finished, after we did the movie, it came out, it played on Valentine's Day for a few years, and then that was it. And I didn't hear about it for a long, long time. And then about three years ago, I started hearing rumors. <laughs> then when I got on Facebook about a year and a half ago, things started happening. So, yeah, you know, I, I'm not sure I understand it totally, but um, yeah, I don't know, maybe, you know, I, I see a lot of horror movies, and I don't. There's a lot of them that aren't very good, and they don't <laughs> grab you. And I know there's something about my bloody Valentine that grab people, but yeah. I don't know if I, I don't know if I could define it. And you have to understand, you know, being in it and seeing it are two entirely different things. You know, oh yeah, right. Actor. I mean, I I can't really relate when I watch it. It's not. It's not like I can't relate. That's, it's a phenomenon of, of of being in a film, you know. A lot of actors never ever films they make, and, right. and uh, I can I understand why that is. Ever that doesn't do mean not, that you can't enjoy. It. <laughs> do you not do you not relate to? Down. Do you not relate to the film, or is it that you don't relate to that version of yourself back in the day? <laughs> Well, <laughs> both really, because first of all, I don't see the film in, as a as a cohesive entity. I see all the stuff that went on. <coughs> Excuse me, I got terrible cold. <coughs> I see all the stuff that happened while we were making it. Um, it's hard to separate the experience of having done it and the experience of watching it. Each scene is in it has its own story. Mm -hmm. Outside of the film itself, you know what I'm saying. So yeah, yeah. yeah it, plus, I also know the artifice. <laughs> like sometimes we're in a real mine, other times we're on a set. Um, you know, I can see I can see all the artifice of the movie. In fact, most movies I can see the artifice. It's really hard to for me to be able to look at a movie objectively unless it's really, really good. Like If it really grabs me, I get carried away just like anybody else. But yeah. in, in a movie like this, it's hard because I I know every moment, you know. I've experienced right. it differently than, than somebody who's just looking at it um, as a new experience. So I've, to tell you the truth, I've only seen it about five times at the most. So oh, okay. I have fans who watch it every single year on Valentine's Day, and some people have seen it 30, 40 times. <laughs> I, I, You're talking to people like that right now. I don't. I see that I've done that with myself, and that Blade Runner. You I'm know the science fiction film with uh, Harry Ford. Oh yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. I've seen that about thirty. Uh, um, wow. And the Matrix I've seen a lot, and also 2001 I've seen many, many, many times. Um, those are three of my favorite films, none of which are horror, of course. But uh, there are some horror. You know what's a really good one these days? American Mary. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. That was a good one. Yeah. Yep, that was a good movie. Yeah, I really like that. That was that's, like the guy, whoever directed that, I would like to work with him. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that was a definitely good film. Yeah. Um, but uh, Riley's joined us. Uh, a fellow Canadian, Paul, has joined us in Raho. Uh, how's it going, Raho? I'm Play doing pretty well. I'm actually incredibly excited about this. Uh, <laughs> not only is this one of my favorite movies ever, Paul, but uh, I am from Sydney, Nova Scotia, uh, which this film was filmed in Sydney Mines, just about 20 minutes from where I lived. Uh, my mother actually grew up in the area and stuff like that, so it's kind of cool. I'm having technical difficulty hearing you, but I got uh, Sydney, Nova Scotia. Yeah, I'm from Sydney. Sorry. Oh, yeah? Okay. Yeah. 
So you know Sydney Mines, Glace Bay, all that region. Yeah, my wife yeah. is from Glace Bay. Uh, my mom was from Sydney Mines, so I know the area pretty well. Okay. Yep. So do you know Valentine's Bluffs? <laughs> you know what? It's funny. Every time I watch the uh, movie, I pick out. I can see where the hospital is and things like that. <laughs> I, was, I, I was in that hospital. Yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. We had a car accident in a movie. Oh wow. Yeah. Oh wow. Well, it's still there. I don't know for how much longer. <laughs> yeah, that's a, that was pretty basic in terms of a hospital, I have to admit. It's hard to call it a hospital. <laughs> well, I'm glad you could join us tonight, Raho, uh, especially on this special uh, special episode because I know you're such a huge fan of the film. So sure. really glad to have you with us tonight, too. And speaking of Valentine's Bluffs, why don't we go ahead and get ready to step into Valentine's Bluffs for ourselves. And uh, let's get ready to watch the film. I uh, hope you guys all have it all. Have your film, the theatrical version of the movie, queued up at zero point zero zero. Uh, we're going to count down from five, and we're going to pe press play and uh, join us as we watch the movie. Live tweet with us uh, during the show at TSF Nation. Uh, leave questions or comments for us or Mr. Kelman in the comment section of the video. Uh, also head over to the SausageFactoryShow.com. The live chat is up and running. Um, we, we, we may try, if we've got time, to do like a little mini Q&A with Paul at the end of the show, so leave us those questions, and uh, yeah. So let's go ahead and let's dive into the film in five, four, three, two, press play. <clears throat> and be mindful of those volumes, people. Be mindful of those volumes. I've got subtitles on. <laughs> oh, by the way, Rahu, are you drinking? Have you got Moosehead? Is that Moosehead? No, moose I have head. to say, I was talking to work before the show, and uh, I, I, <laughs> I worked late. I just made it in time for the show, and I did not get a chance to swing by and get any Mooseheads. I, oh, I was heartbroken. Oh, so, man. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, now I'm watching this uh, a separate screen here. Okay. Well, let me uh, let me go ahead and ask you a question as we as we're uh, as we're walking through the mines here. Um, how did you? Uh, what was the casting process like for the film, Paul? And how did you get uh, get cast in the film My Bloody Valentine? Uh, Keith Knight, who was in the movie played Hollis, right? Uh huh. Oh, he's the big guy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Hollis. Uh, Keith Knight was. Uh, he and I were doing another film at the time. We were in Montreal, and uh, he got an audition to go to, to some movie. Uh, oh. It was Pop. That's, that's not good. <laughs> no. <laughs> okay. Well, uh, we'll try and get Paul back. Well, we're still here, so that's all yeah. that really matters. Because <laughs> everybody came to see us. Yeah, right. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Um, I think maybe those plugins finally, finally uh, worked for Paul. Damn and you, plugins Google's. finally got him. Yeah, I think oh, it was the plugins. Here we go. But. Uh, oh. oh yeah. Because this happens every day down in the mine. <laughs> oh yeah. yeah. Tell us a mind story there, Raiho. Tell us a mind story. Oh, I wish I could. Yeah. <laughs> got to keep the mind. The, the uh, what happens in the mind stays in the mind. Oh, okay. <laughs> Twenty years ago. Well, since like Paul said, it's so cold in uh, Canada, you got to go somewhere to get warm, and I guess underground would be it. There he is. Okay. We Here we go. Oh, uh, we got story. <laughs> The, the, the thing just crashed on yeah, me. Yeah, here we go. Oh. Well, yeah, it tends to do that. Nice to be well. <laughs> yeah. Well, we're glad to, glad to have you back. Um, but, yeah, um, okay. uh, if you want to continue. Yeah, so Keith was going to this audition, and he said, do you want to come along? So I said, well, okay, can I crash <laughs> the audition? And he said, well, why don't I talk to them, tell them you're here, and uh, you can come in. So he went in audition, told them I was there. They said, okay, we'll see you. So I came in, I auditioned, and they gave me the part. <laughs> it was really weird. 
<laughs> I didn't even know what I was getting cast for. And then, uh, okay, this is a weird scene coming up. Are, are you got are are the cars coming up? The lights in the tunnel. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Yep. And here we are. This was a hell of a scene, I'll tell you, because they backed us. We were in these cars, and we were in the tunnel, and we were about 300 feet down. And we weren't supposed to be that far down. We crashed through a couple of walls of uh, two by fours. Wow. And plywood. And then they brought us back up. They didn't realize that we'd had this incredible crash down there. And then uh, I, I freaked out after we came up. Here we are. We're acting like real professional actors here. Like as if nothing had happened. <laughs> Smiling, laughing, joking. The minute the scene was over, I freaked right out. <laughs> Well, I mean, I can't, I can't imagine what it must be like being, you know, hundreds of feet below the earth. And weren't you guys below the ocean, too? Like miles That's below, right. beneath yep. the ocean? Yep. 600 feet below the ocean floor. Yeah, all wow. the mines in the in the area of the Princess Mine, they just go straight out on an angle like this into the ocean. Wow. <laughs> like yep. All the different pits, they just go like that, same in Glace Bay. But it wasn't a working mine, though. So it was a little different. Because it was quite cavern. Mm. And uh, this shower scene here, this is the these are the showers for the liners in the mine, and uh, there was no hot water. Oh. So we're taking oh. freezing cold oh, showers man. and freezing cold out, and we're totally <laughs> naked. We're in a concentration camp. <laughs> it was so cold, I can't tell you. And everybody's joking, having a good time, and we're freezing. Here, look at me. See see that pot I got there all of a sudden? I gained 25 pounds over lunches and beer. <laughs> this scene was shot much later. So I'm 25 well, well, pounds heavier from one scene to the other. <laughs> <laughs> it's all that moose head you're drinking, right? <laughs> yeah, that, that stuff's awful. Yeah. <laughs> We like to call it moose. Let, let, let me ask you. Let me ask you. How much was was like moose had a sponsor of the film or what? And, and how yeah, much? They how much moose had been about seven hundred cases of beer? <laughs> the, oh my god! I <laughs> tell so, yeah, we had a lot of beer. We drank a lot of beer. Every I lunch, every stuff. And on top of that, Keith and I were heavy drinkers, so we used to, we we drank a lot of whiskey. Irish whiskey was our favorite. Uh -huh. Keith and I were very close friends, and, uh, you know, he died prematurely several years ago. Oh, and, uh, I did not it, know that. It was just very, very sudden. No, you didn't know that? No, no. did not he know that. He, he, I think he was about 50 years old when he died. And uh. within a week, he was dead. Jeez. It was just sad. Awful. That's sad. Wow. Yeah, it was very sad. He and I were very, very close for many years. Uh, we even lived together at one point, and uh, he was such a, a wonderful, generous, kind of always joking. We worked really well together. Uh, this is so funny watching this. <laughs> <laughs> well, tell us Hill about the tell us about the the what? small town. I mean, what was what was the small town like that you guys shot the film in? Well, they all thought we were some kind of big shots from the, from the well, from Ontario. And uh -huh. uh, they thought we had lots of money and stuff. So they were out there hawking everything at us, you know. It was just like a free for all. We were t we were the tourists that they'd never seen before. Mm -hmm. So we took over the town basically and <laughs> Everybody made a lot of money off us, or off the film anyway, off the, the, the studio. Right. And it was weird. It was weird. But you know, the miners, like we actually went down to the real mine at Glace Bay, and uh, they took us down to the face so we could learn what it was really like to be a miner. And uh, these people were like ex extraordinarily generous. And these are hard-working folks, you know. 
oh, yeah, I, I yeah. don't understand it. I could never, I could never do anything even close to mining and for real. Mm -hmm. Well, we were we were talking before uh, before the show, and, and I mentioned that you know, My Bloody Valentine has the distinction of it's kind of the working man's horror movie, uh, whereas yeah. you know Friday the Thirteenth and Halloween they were you know they were about teens in out in the woods or in the suburbs, and this was about you know adults, hardworking men. So. Yeah, it's like I was saying earlier. It's very popular in a lot of the 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 uh, the working class centers like Liverpool. We have a lot of fans from England um, in in those in those type of cities. Uh, same thing in Africa, uh, really in Australia. You know, where a man's a man. <laughs> wow. <laughs> but you know, it's uh, it's an Phenomena, it's true. I ne you know, I never thought of it before, but you're quite right about that. That's well, one thing I've always liked you about it. Were you were you aware, Paul, that Quentin Tarantino has allegedly called My Bloody Valentine his favorite slasher yeah, movie yeah. of all time? Yeah, I know that. So <laughs> what he should cast me in something. Yes, he should. I think he should. Yes, he should. <laughs> I totally agree. Yep. I'd love to be in Western. That would be awesome. He's doing a lot of westerns lately too, isn't he? Like, Is he? He did um, uh, the one go. with Jamie Fox. Django and Chain. Django and Chain. And his new one, he's got coming out. I think is a western yeah, yeah. too. Yeah, I saw that. Yeah, that was okay. <laughs> now this guy Hello? here, Don Frank, he's a very famous actor. The actors that surrounded the core group were were older actors who had been around for like 25, 30 years in the business. Don Franks was probably the most experienced of them all. He'd been on Broadway. Uh, he's done every single television show in existence. He's been around a really long time. He's a jazz musician, yeah. very, very well known. And he's a, he's got long hair down to his ass. <laughs> and uh, he has uh, he's an honorary member of a, a, a native tribe because he married a, a native woman a chief's okay. daughter and he's got an enormous tattoo on the back of his back of a <laughs> buffalo in full color the guy was just unbelievable getting the real now, this straight guy, this guy <laughs> is also dead uh, Jack Van Evra who's playing happy Okay. He died ah. uh, shortly after the film. Oh, bummer. Yeah. He, yeah, well, he wasn't very healthy, but he was really a great character, though. Yeah, he was probably the funniest of everybody. Although, you know, he plays the grumpiest, you know? Yeah. <laughs> oh, by the way, those what are kind plastic hands. Yes. Tell us what kind of uh, did, did you guys get into any kind of uh, um, <clears throat> what kind of shenanigans did you guys get into on this on the set? Shenanigans. <laughs> shenanigans. Yeah. Hijinks. Like what? <laughs> what do you mean? Like Hijinks. <laughs> <laughs> that, this was you know you had to be very careful. This was not an easy shoot. This was a dangerous shoot. And uh, a lot of it was uh, you had to you had to be really focused because uh, anything could go wrong, especially down in the mine. I mean, we had we had scares, we had gas leaks, um, we had to evacuate one time. We uh, we did a lot of stunt work in the in the cars, like the fight at the end. Yeah, you know, I mean. Uh, it's a it's a harsh environment to work in. Mm -hmm. I just had a lot I just of so I no, just I about shenanigans. Okay. <laughs> the only shenanigans I just we, uh, let me think for a second. Well, the funniest the the best parts were in between. Like for example, when Happy has his, that axe that goes through a pickaxe goes through his head. Mm. It comes out mm -hmm. his eye with the eyeball hanging off the end. Yeah. 
that's, I mean, I'm sitting there at a table having lunch with the guy, and he's got a pickaxe through his head. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, those, those were fun. Th that stuff was pretty interesting. I mean, he's just, you know... Well, I, mean, I I just assume that you know you've got you've got a young you got you know good looking guys good looking gals making this movie in a small town with with not much to do, uh, you know I, I, the imagination goes wild. You imagine some uh, some some tomfoolery going on behind the scenes. Not much. It was uh, first of all, it was a short shoot, very intense. Halfway through the movie, uh, Paramount bought the film. Uh, they seen the rushes and they really liked it, so they bought it. So down we were under the gun. We had to complete the movie within a certain budget, within a certain amount of time, and the pressure really mounted after that. So if we didn't get it done on time, under uh, under budget or with within budget, they you know their offer to buy it would be gone. So uh, we had to take the whole thing very seriously, and it was a was fast and fierce, that shoot. It was only about, I think, maybe we stretched it out to five weeks. I can't quite remember. But it was, you know, 12, 14-hour days. Um, really, no time. It was just in between. We did a lot of drinking. That was that was about <laughs> the most we got into, was getting drunk all the time. <laughs> <laughs> I had, somebody had to take care of all that moose head. Those cases of moose head weren't going to drink themselves. You know it. Uh, <laughs> uh, we drank them if had to. <laughs> there was nothing else. And it was all free. Right. Free beer always right. tastes pretty good to me. Yeah, that's the best yeah. kind. <laughs> <laughs> well, let me open up the floor to, to, to the rest of you guys. Do you guys have any questions for, for Paul about the film? Gosh. Um... Oh, you see that girl who just went by me? Sure. That was my yeah. wife. At the time, oh. that, was, that was my wife. Nice. Right on, right on. Never knew that, that's for sure. That, that marriage lasted 10 years, but she was a real sweetheart. Okay. Hmm. Have, you been, have you ever been approached... Have you ever been approached to do personal appearances at like conventions or or do a, or do a commentary for the film or, or anything like that in the past? Yeah, I've been approached for conventions. I, I've never done one yet. I, I did one. We did um. There was a retrospective on the movie with the full cast here in Toronto one time. It was a special showing. Mm -hmm. Hundreds of people showed up from as far away as. Uh, I don't know. I can't remember now. Well, Philadelphia, I remember. There were a lot of Americans came up. Um, that was about the only one I did. I signed a lot of autographs and stuff. I still sign autographs, but people send me stuff. I sign them. I send them back. You know, uh, the convention route. It's uh, that's a tough gig. I'm not as young as I used to be. <laughs> and right. I the energy, you know. And, that, and to travel, and, it, you know, I mean, you can make a good buck at doing it, but I'm really not into the commercialization of all of this stuff. It's just my style. <clears throat> That's you refreshing know, to hear. I have a question for you. No. What you know, scene took it, the longest to shoot? Yeah. Go ahead. Uh, what's the lo what, what scene took the longest to shoot during the film? Hmm. Uh, well... Hmm. I don't know, really. I, I guess the the mo the longest shoots were were the, were in the mine, for sure, because you know, like just to even just set up down in the mine uh, is a big deal, and it took because it was so far down, the elevator ride to get down or up was eleven minutes. Oh wow! So, wow. It would only hold maybe six or seven people tops, and or and or three people and a camera, and then you'd have you know then there were other trips for the lighting and then the, the lighting people and the rest of the crew, and then all the cast and then the director and all those people. So I, you know it's like you're looking at about an hour and a half to get down there everything, another hour and a half to get back up with everything. 
<laughs> and then you got four or five hours or whatever of shooting, and you have to keep turning the lights off all the time because if they overheat, and uh, and and there's a gas buildup, one spark, and the whole thing blows up. So. Oh yeah. <laughs> like I said, it was a dangerous shoot. I mean, you really, you were always aware of this stuff, you know. Mm. And they made sure that you were too. I mean, you couldn't smoke down there. I was a smoker at the time. I'm not now. But, I was always you know, so surprised. You had to and, shoot the back. <laughs> well, yeah, I was I was always surprised that they actually did a lot of the shooting down there. I kind of thought maybe they simulated it or something like that because it is we, a dangerous spot. <laughs> Go down well, there. The the only simulated was a set. Which was very well done, by the way. Uh, you know, the very last scene where there's the cave in, the fight, yeah. the cave in, and then I pull, she pulls his arm out, and all that stuff. Yeah, uh, that was mm -hmm. a set. Oh, uh, okay. The yeah. cave in, no. The cave in, like you know, the, it was a one-shot deal. So they said, don't worry about it. It's just you know. You know, it's just, uh, what do you call it, styrofoam and stuff like that that's going to fall on your head. No problem, balsa wood. But 150 pounds is 150 pounds. <laughs> yes. Right, right. Can you imagine, you know, 150 pounds falls on my head. So, you know, when, when, we're going, when we're doing that scene, the reactions are very real. When the thing caves in, it really caved in. Right. But that was a set. It was really well done, I have to admit. It's seamless, really. I, I never like yeah. I, I just assumed it was all on sets. I thought maybe you shot around the Princess Mine. I never really would have you know what I mean? I'm really surprised you guys actually went down and did so much in it, yeah. Oh no, we spent a lot of time down there. And was it all shooting at the Princess Mine or did you shoot it all in Glace Bay or was it just you went to Glace Bay to see a real working mine? We saw we went to Glace Bay for a real working mine. Yeah. Um, and to get our faces dirty, and uh, but we shot around like where's where the bluffs? I can't remember where the bluffs are. Is that in Sydney? That's in North Sydney, I think. Yeah. Yeah. And that was a really cold day. It looks like a cold day, <laughs> and you know what? It's funny. It was, I've been out there really many cold. times, and the wind whips right through there. <laughs> this is an interesting scene. This one here that takes place with all the wrecked cars. We had, uh, I, I kind of like the scene. It's really the only scene where Neil and I really got a chance to act together. That's not really me playing the harmonica. I was playing, but they dubbed in somebody else. <laughs> they thought it was really bad. <laughs> <laughs> well, did you, did you get along good with everybody on the and set? I, well... I'll tell you, I, would, uh, I had a hard time with that film. Uh, there was a lot, there was a lot of pressure on me, and uh, I wasn't really prepared. I don't think, I, I, I don't think I understood what it was to to play a lead role, and a, a lead role, the whole kind of movie hinges on you, and uh, everybody is depending on you to be like the leader of the pack. And to set the tone of the shoot, all that stuff kind of just went right over my head, you know. And I only realized it at the time I was doing it, and I I didn't handle it very well. So I was um, like a lot of the anger that you see in these in these shots, especially in this scene, mm -hmm. it's pretty real. I was uh, I was uh, I was not very happy, and I, I I was an angry young man to begin with, you know. I, I, there was no real character development in this. I was basically who you see here. That that is my character for in real life at that time. I was arrogant. I was uh, angry. You know, I was a young artist. You know, all that bullshit. Right. Yeah. <laughs> you got it. You want to fight? You got it. <laughs> I uh, I laugh at that. It's so funny. Did you have any reservations about doing a horror film, or were you just happy to get the work? No, I was. I, no, I was. I was glad to get the work. I mean, and the money. The money was good. Ish. <laughs> it said it. You know, like I mean, it set happens in the film business is when you're an actor. 
you're, let's say you do a movie like this, and then you you have a, a set salary for this. That sets precedent. So from then on, I'm worth five thousand a week. Mm. So that's important, you yeah. know, because you know you might only work ten weeks in the whole year. <laughs> so it's not really like a lot of money. It seems like a lot, but you know, at that time I just spent it all. It just went right through my fingers. I did a few movies in a row, so I, I, I made a lot of money in a very short period of time. And uh, it was just, we just spent it all. Keith and I went crazy. <laughs> we used to stay in hotels overnight downtown because it was just too much trouble to go home. So we'd rent these suites. We did all kinds of crazy stuff. <laughs> but it's the film, you know. And you're always yep. traveling around in limousines and crap like that. And you get really used to that kind of lifestyle, you know. Yeah. And it's like, it, it's just, uh, I don't know, it's embarrassing now. <laughs> well, did they? Did the movie have any kind of big premiere or anything like that? Yeah. <laughs> that was so funny. We had a red carpet opening here in Toronto. Just a minute, let me turn the sound down a little. I can. Yeah, it's a little loud. Uh, I'll be waiting for your call. Um, yeah, we had an opening in Toronto at a major theater downtown on Young Street, which is a main drag here. And uh, it was a red carpet, and I was driven in a chauffeur driven something or other, I can't remember, a Bentley, I think it was. And outside was playing a country web band. I, I never got that. I never understood that one. A country western band. What did that have to do with the movie? I don't know. <laughs> right. I, I would have had like a heavy metal band maybe. But, you there know. you go. Anyway, so we get there, and there's all this stuff, and they, you know, they hire. You know what a shill is? Oh yeah. A shill is a, a, a person you hire as a. Like screaming teenagers coming, oh, okay. screaming at you, asking you for your autograph, and everybody sees that. Well, those are shills. Yeah. They're paid to do. <laughs> so all these girls <laughs> screaming up to me on the red carpet. I, you know, there's such a the movie business is so artificial. So it's all smoke and mirrors. You know what I mean? And, uh, right. and anyway, so we get in. And I, and I go, well, okay, I'd like some popcorn. And they, I, they wouldn't let me eat any popcorn. They closed the, 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 the confectionery stand. I couldn't believe it. How can you go and see a horror movie without eating popcorn? <laughs> yeah. Man, that's I mean, tough. That's not fit. Anyway, that, I thought that was pretty silly. And it was a footy with... Cocktails and champagne and all this stuff, you know, and all the reviewers were there and blah 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 blah. Yeah, they, you know, they did a number, and my agent did a number. I'll tell you. But you know, oh, and I opened in New York too. Uh, that okay. was cool. That's very cool. Yeah. Uh, yeah. There I was, my name up in lights on on Times Square. I thought that was really too much. <laughs> You know, you yeah, really know you did it for a whole minute <laughs> when that happened. <laughs> yeah. My five minutes of fame. <laughs> That's pretty cool, though. Which was, uh, which was the bigger premiere, Toronto or New York? Oh, I don't know if it actually... Well, I guess... I, I don't know. It wasn't really a premiere in New York. Okay. It just opened at a major theater uh, at, around Times Square. And I don't know why, but they put my name first before the movie, which was really cool on the marquee. Yeah. But, um, and all my friends went to see it. I mean, those were, you know, it was all kind of fun, that stuff. Mm -hmm. But, you know, it doesn't really mean anything. Yeah. Well, cool. have you, <laughs> do you it, have any thoughts memory. on the... Do you have any thoughts on the remake of the film? Have you seen the, the 3D remake that they did a few years ago of My Bloody Valentine? I bought it, but I never looked at it. Um, the two guys, the, the two brothers from uh, Supernatural, right? The, yep. the you know, I like their acting a lot. I think they're very good. I love them. On, I like that TV show a lot. Um, 
and I like their acting, but I, I, I never saw the movie. Okay. I bought I'm a big it. fan. Go ahead. <laughs> I don't know. I'm a big fan of that show too. The only thing I didn't like about the remake was what they did to the story. I thought they changed it up a little bit too much, and the CGI was a little, a little off. Yeah, well, it, you know, I don't know if I can really sit there with these cardboard glasses and watch, you know, this 3D <laughs> thing. But yeah, the, right. um, that's a very, um, it's a very major thing right now because that's. This is how Hollywood makes its money now, is doing remakes and, and putting them in 3D. The Asian market is the big market, and the Asian market is totally, uh, they're totally stuck on 3D. They have to have their CGI in 3D. And, yeah, um, Paul, man. I'll tell you, these glasses suck. <laughs> uh -oh. <laughs> uh. My bloody Valentine 3D glasses. I tell you, the good thing about the remake is we got this uh, special edition to come out. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, this is a great edition. Yeah, yeah. that was the I best have... thing about the remake. I, I didn't even know that My Bloody Valentine uh, came out on Blu-ray until uh, last week. I have the VHS and I've got th this copy, and I guess that's all. Now I guess I got to get the uh, the Blu-ray version as well. The Blu-ray yep. is the special that's edition, it. so yeah. it looks really good. So is that does. A full yeah, oh, that's good. <laughs> Except uh, I'm not in the interview portion, right? Uh, no, I don't. Think no. So. Yeah, I, I was going to ask you if they had, if they'd asked you to. Uh, to do an interview for the special features on the the new the new version. Uh, as far as I know, what happened is that first of all, Maholka is from Montreal, the director, right? So that's where he's based. At the last minute, there was this decision to do this, uh, you know, this this extra part of interviews and background info on the movie, but it was done in Montreal. And it was done in a hurry, and it was done uh, with the people, that, only the people that were actually there. Laurie Hallier was there in Montreal, um, and who, I, I don't know who else did that, that interview portion, <laughs> but I wasn't, so I was here in Toronto, so they did it without me. I, they didn't even tell me about it. Wow. I think it was done really fast. It was like a last-minute decision to throw it in there, you know. I don't remember this thing. Oh. I don't remember that scene. Isn't that funny? <laughs> There's Keith right there. He's great. Oh, this, yeah, he's this is the car. This is the car chase. Or, yeah. or, our race? No, it's not, is it? Oh, no, I had an accident here. This is where you guys go up to the where the hospital is. <laughs> <laughs> they didn't like tell you about that. <laughs> when we get on to the bluffs, I'll tell you. Yeah. Hey, that car was really quite special. That's a that's a Camaro. Yeah, that's a nice car. It was, but it was a, it was a souped up Camaro. All it had was power. <laughs> oh, isn't it? I, I forgotten about this. It's quite pretty there, isn't it? Yes, yeah. it is. Perfect place to take a lady to romance her. <laughs> yeah. Oh, isn't that sweet? <laughs> She's really good. I um, Did you see her? I don't know. Are you guys uh, Star Trek fans at all? I think there's a few Trek fans here. Yeah, yep. okay. Lori, Lori, do you remember an episode on, uh, let's see now, Star Trek Voyager, where Lori was the love interest for Chakotay? No? No, I, I only I only started watching a little bit of that TNG <laughs> with my wife recently, so I haven't seen any Voyager, unfortunately. No, Star Trek Voyager. Yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah. No, I never By saw. Anyway, she had an affair with Chicote in the in the episode. Uh, okay. Cool. So she's kissed a few famous lips, that girl. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> well, she, uh, you know, uh, her interview portion on the new, the special edition, you know, she's still looking uh, mighty fine. So. Yeah, uh, she's looking still pretty looking. good. I just talked to her the other day. She's. Uh, He's going in for a foot operation, so I, I, we're going to have a, a yak after she uh, gets out of the hospital. Yeah. Oh, cool. She lives out, well, she we lives out west. Okay. Pardon? Well, we wish her the best with her foot surgery, for sure. Yeah. Okay, now this kiss here, this is too much. <laughs> it is so cold. <laughs> hey. know, we, our noses are dripping. <laughs> saliva. We had to do that three times because the saliva. Like we, as I pulled away, we had this big string of saliva between our faces. <laughs> wait, wait, Paul. This is where you won it the Oscar, right? It was just gross. <laughs> <laughs> so we had to do it again and again and again. Oh dear, how awful! <laughs> how awful, yeah. Uh, that's work. One of the more joyous moments of the movie. <laughs> How was uh, Neil Affleck to work with? Well, Neil, I don't. Th I think it was his first film. I'm, oh. not, I'm not. Are you there? I, can you guys see me? Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yep. I got a green screen here on the. Okay, something's going on. Anyways, uh, I think it was Neil's first film. I'm not sure, but I'm pretty sure. So he. He, I don't know, he was still kind of working at what the acting thing was all about. So what he did was, he was very enthusiastic. So he used that kind of, that new energy. A lot of the people had only done maybe one thing before. Uh, these were a lot of very young actors. Like, I, I was 10 years senior to almost everybody there. Mm. So... Uh, and I'd done maybe four films prior to this or five, I can't remember. And um, but this was all new to them. And uh, you can see that the energy that's in the film between the cast of chemistry, it's very real because they're all really trying to, they're all being very earnest in their performance. They're not, nobody's like pretending to be something or other. So the energy was quite uh, quite natural, and uh, Neil was the same way. And when Neil, well, when we get to that scene, I'll tell you about. Mm -hmm. I think that's this probably what a, makes the movie so endearing is that uh, that energy comes off on screen. It really makes the char characters likable, and it makes it realistic. And that, and combined with the danger you went through in the mines, that really added to the film and, and really set it apart from all the other Me Too slasher films of that era. And that's one yeah, of the reasons why it's one of my favorites. I agree with you. I and I only saw that after it was done. But I realized that uh, that how the chemistry came came across in in the movie. Everybody was really um, everybody worked together. There were there was no bullshit. You know, like you get a lot of stuff that happens between actors competing with each other and trying to show the other up and stuff like it happens all the time but there was nothing like that in this film everybody was like really concentrating on getting doing it right you know yeah, cool. and uh, yeah that was really good here oh uh, yeah they, we had to reshoot this scene uh, about uh, three months later because I had such a pod on me that they had to reshoot the thing from uh, above my waist so you didn't see my stomach. <laughs> it, you know, I'm mean, telling you, it's it's weird. They were pissed off too because they had to reconstruct the entire set in Montreal, fly me into Montreal, just so they could shoot that, that one scene where I'm sitting at the bar so that you don't see my big gut. This was really a good scene. The the special effects here, like they were, yeah. it was just an automatic thing in the background when he opens the door. It was really cool. Some it's a sh watching some of these scenes actually being shot were uh, 
were very effective. Like it looked really quite real. Like when she gets hooked up onto the shower and all the the, the shower head comes out through her mouth. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That was a great scene. I was there watching it and I thought it was just fabulous. And they everybody had um, a, a full body cast made of themselves um, down in Los Angeles. Well, except for me because I don't die in the movie. But everybody who died had uh, body casts made so they that, that they could make uh, images of them in uh, in I don't know what 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 what, what, do, what do you call that stuff. Yeah, uh, actually, on the uh, on the DVD, the the special effects guy was talking about, and I forget it, some kind of uh, rubber latex stuff that was yeah. pretty new to special effects at that time, yeah. where you could make a, a, a body appear real, you know, with with lifelike features. Yeah, it was very it was very strange because you know it, it, you could see that she'd be sitting beside the dummy. And you could hardly tell them apart if they didn't move. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. well, I think isn't there a story, something about how they tried to get some of the the bodies shipped up from LA, and that it couldn't get through customs or something like that? I heard about. <laughs> I don't know what the real story was, but yeah, yeah there was a hiccup there. Yeah. But the, the, they were really well done. All that stuff. Mm -hmm. I think Paramount had something to do with making sure that the quality was as high as it could be within a limited budget and um, right. so the pressure was there to, to do it right. And I, I thought it was very successful. The, all the horror parts were quite good. Especially the one in, uh, oh well, when we see her coming out of the, the dryer. The, uh, the dryer. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's pretty that gruesome. It's so close to see, I'll tell you. <laughs> Well, are you? Uh, would you call yourself a horror movie fan? Um, uh, yeah, I, I, I've well, I've seen, I've seen hundreds and hundreds of horror movies, so I guess I must be. <laughs> uh, I've been watching my very favorite. I'll tell you, my favorite horror movie of all time was uh, Frankenstein. There you go. He's, oh, he's my he's my hero, and uh, like the 1931 version I'm talking about. And, right, uh, right, yeah. Yeah, that's uh, one of my favorites too. Yeah, and you know, I mean, he was an amazing actor, Boris Karloff. Yes. Yeah. Highly underrated as a as a serious actor, he was so good. But I, yeah, I've seen. Um, I I can't think of a horror movie I haven't seen. I'm not so up on what's been going on recently. I kind of wait until they come on to the uh, to the movie channel, and then then we watch them on the big screen at home here. Yeah, you're not missing right. a whole lot. <laughs> yeah, you're not missing anything. <laughs> yeah, you're not missing much, man. They have a movie I called Frankenstein. I haven't seen it in years. <laughs> Pardon? What was that? What were saying, Ork? Oh, so they have a movie called I Frankenstein. Stay away from that one. <laughs> I thought it. I thought it. Yeah. Too bad. Yeah. Too bad. Yeah. <laughs> I'm quite critical. I'm I what I I'm big on science fiction, and uh, here's Keith. I I love to watch Keith. He's so. It's kind of cool though that even though he's gone, he's still here in a way. It's uh, you know, very interesting. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Now here you see me. Here I am. You know, you see how my hair is. They dyed my hair black because it was gray. They uh, they make they gave me bangs to make me look younger, and they put rouge <laughs> on my cheeks so that I'd appear like you know to have that twenty something glow. It was really funny because I was thirty one and I'm supposed to be playing a twenty one year old. We did a lot of drinking on set too. Yeah, <laughs> see <laughs> <laughs> I see yep, a there's a Schlitz. There's a Schlitz. <laughs> those, are, those are real, those are real beers. <laughs> How many times did this scene take? <laughs> you know, really, I'm telling you, Mahalka was the one-shot master. You know. Oh uh, yeah. Oh, you see this? There's my, my there's my ex-wife there. 
And and this is Carl Marat. He uh, he actually did a lot of work after that. He had his own television show for a while here in Canada. Oh, what was it? I never saw it. Oh. He played a. He was playing a. Uh, I think I saw one episode. He, 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 it was a hockey series where he was a a, a hockey player. Okay. It was quite successful, but I I didn't really follow it. We're all friends on Facebook. Uh, just about everybody. A lot of people don't know. Oh, he, this is a great scene where he, he gets his uh, face boiled. <laughs> he gets killed. He gets killed in the wiener water. Yeah. Yeah. Where he go? goes. He goes. Oh, isn't that that was so funny? <laughs> <laughs> and then you'll see my wife played his girlfriend, so that she's the one who starts screaming when they t when they tell her that he's dead, <laughs> he's been boiled alive. <laughs> Not like a wiener and beer party. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. <laughs> they must have set that up just to do the boil scene. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you you know I have to admit there were some pretty unique deaths in this film. Yep. Yeah. I'm, who gets boiled alive in a wiener, in a wiener yeah. pot, <laughs> <laughs> or thrown at a dryer? That's a one. Oh, or... <laughs> well, these dogs. These were dog. These dogs were mongrels. You see. You see how he's attacking the. Those are not trick dogs. Those are real mongrels. Yeah, that, feet. And that one looks pretty vicious. <laughs> yeah, I know. Well, they fed them raw meat to get them really going. Oh. That'll do it. Yeah. Uh, that was a weird scene, actually. Now, were were you aware that, um, uh, from what I heard, uh, George Mahalka actually approached Paramount about doing a sequel many years ago? Yeah. Were you yeah, Were you I, aware of that? Yeah. Yeah. I'd like, I, you know, I think a a sequel is a good idea, but um. And I'd really like to be a part of that if it happened. Mm -hmm. And I have some really good ideas, people, uh, that I that I think would really work super well, actually. But what I'm really interested in doing is the prequel. Oh, if, about if I had the energy right, I would approach a. Yeah, and how oh. it all happened. Cool. There, there's a really good story there. So I would do the prequel, then I would do the sequel. That, I think that's the order it should be in. Yeah. Okay, but, here we go. Well, do you have any idea what Mahalka's sequel was was about? Mm, no, I don't think he ever discussed it with any of us. Oh, okay. I think I don't know if he. I have no idea actually. And we, and he and I have never discussed it. I asked him if we could get a sequel together, whether he'd be willing to direct it or not. But um, that was about all. It's a good scene. She's good in this. Oh, well, that's pretty good. Ooh. <laughs> oh, I forgot he slugged, slugged me there. <laughs> Oh, I forgot we had this fight. Oh, my goodness. It looks like you really take your head off that light. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I wasn't. that wasn't supposed to happen. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> my fucking light, I know. Yeah. It, it, it's, a lot of little things can happen in a, in a situation like that, you know. You just got, you got to be really uh, focused. Because you know, even a simple thing like that, you can get you can, you can hurt yourself. And Keith nearly took my neck off <laughs> when he grabbed me. <laughs> He's very strong. He was so strong that guy. The guy was like, he was a six foot four, weighed about two hundred and forty pounds. The guy was like solid. He was the Hulk. <laughs> I love that about him. The guy was just so amazing. He's such a such a strong man and so mild, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, this is good. This scene. I might like this movie. <laughs> <laughs> well, this is only the sixth time you've seen it. So. That was a good little. Scene. 
I really haven't seen that in a long time. And Alf, this is Alf Humphreys playing the clown as always. Uh, <laughs> it was very good. See, prior to this, the guy Carol Marat, Alf Humphreys, um, Keith, and myself had been in another movie just prior to this one. So we just come off the set from being together in this other movie called Gas, and then we moved right into My Bloody Valentine together. So it was like we already had a thing going as a group, as a cast. Mm -hmm. And that, I think that translated right into the next, into MBV. Because we already had relationships, acting relationships going. Now, is it true that nobody on the set knew who the killer was? So to That's keep that, right. that mystery, okay. Yeah, I didn't even know. So uh, it, it, that's the thing. See, I, it, it, they kept asking me to play it so that I would be suspect. Neil would be suspect. Actually, actually, those were the only two, I think. I mean, who did you think? Did anybody think it was me or maybe one of the well, other guys? Well, the movie does a really good job of... Of keeping it a mystery, I think. When, when I mean, really, when you think about it, there's really only, you know, two suspects, and and the movie does a good job of keeping you guessing one way or the other. So, it really does try to convince you that it's actually Harry Warden. <laughs> right. Exactly. Oh, well, that was the other thing. Right. Right. <coughs> yeah, I don't even know if I ever suspected there would be a twist like that. Do you know what I mean? The first time I watched it, I just kind of, but uh. No, did a great job yeah. of that. Yeah, well, we, you know what? The way they did it with us is that they only gave us the script uh, the night before whatever we were shooting. So we never saw the entire script. And we never knew no. until the very end. They had to tell us, obviously. Right. So really, it was in the last week of shooting that we found out that, uh, oh no! She, she's gonna eat one of the death wieners. Oh. Uh, she, is there an eyeball oh. in there or something? Heart. <laughs> oh, that heart. The heart. Uh. Oh, and then oh, the, and there he is. <laughs> the body. Yeah. yeah, you see, that's really well done. I mean, that looks like him. Mm -hmm. yeah. Now this is Helen Udy. She's a wonderful actress. I I I liked her so much. She was just so. I don't know. There was something just so genuine about her on, like, on every single take. And she had such a... She's, she's a clown today. She's, um, she lives in Canada. She's in Quebec. Um, hmm. And she, uh, she's ma made a living as a clown and an acrobat and an actress. Wow. She do oh, actually, she's not in Quebec. I, I lied. She's down in Los Angeles. Okay. Hmm. He does beach acrobatics, and and she's not like I don't know how old she is now, but she must be close to forty five, fifty, and uh, and she's still out there doing acrobatics on the beach. It's really quite amazing. If you go to her Facebook page, you'll see all kinds of pictures of her and videos too. Cool. I try to Let's keep it. I think we all have Facebook pages except for Neil. Okay. This was a very good scene. Uh, I was we were actually standing there watching this happen. It was really quite scary. All these all these uniforms falling down like that. Uh, yeah. in sequence. You kept thinking there was gonna be an actual person coming down. And then, of course, it does. There he is. <laughs> now, this is another guy. This is another actor, the unsung hero of this movie, by the way. His name at the time was Peter Cowper. His actual name is Liam Blackwood. He's also on Facebook. Okay. And uh, nobody's ever seen him, except that he is in the movie. Let me think for a second. No, you never see his face. And he did a lot of stunts, and he played the killer. Oh, okay. 
my my favorite part is at the end <laughs> when you know you asked me about shenanigans. I tell you, it was yeah. really hard. Great face when we pull that rubber arm out of the rubble. <laughs> <laughs> that, was, that was just too much, man. That was fun. <laughs> Poor Lori, she really had to play it, you know. Yeah. <laughs> she must have cracked up a couple of times there before she could get it. It was just so ridiculous. I can't even remember if it looked real or not, but it was just the just the whole idea of this rubber arm sticking out. <laughs> Her having to pull it out and then scream in horror. Yeah. <laughs> Now, did you say that you keep in touch with a lot of the cast uh, via Facebook? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And we message a lot, and uh, sometimes we talk on the phone. That's cool. Very cool. Yeah, you know, it's, I mean, it's so many years ago now that uh, we're all different people, but, you know, we all shared this experience together. And and now that there's so many new fans for this film, which is, I mean, it really is kind of outrageous because I mean there are literally in the last year and a half, I must have gotten seven eight hundred fans on my on my Facebook site, <laughs> and uh, people, I you know, I don't know, I've never met. I, actually, I've met a few of the fans, but in here in Toronto they come here, but otherwise I I, I don't know them. But we've developed relationships as well. I really like that buckle I was wearing. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's, a, that's a cool belt buckle. That's a badass belt buckle. Yeah. Yeah. What, that was my belt, actually. I can't remember. But yeah, I think it's, you know, I think My Bloody Valentine is a movie that, you know, it's not as well known as Friday the 13th or Nightmare on Elm Street, but it has a, a you know a huge cult following, and it's one of those movies that more and more people sort of discover. I think uh, every year, and you know, um, it, it kind of got it's lost in the. Well, I guess that's why they call it a cult movie. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It, there was just so many slasher films that came out Tony, after Friday the 13th. Tony, the the discerning lost. horror movie. Yeah. Well, what, what, what year did Friday the 13th come out? 80. 1980. 1980? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So they were one year prior to us. But I've seen a lot of horror movies since. I've copied a lot of scenes from My Bloody Valentine, which I found kind of interesting. <laughs> mm -hmm. You know, at the time, I was not aware that we were doing anything original. I think that's the difference in in terms of my understanding of the film and other people who have seen it. Um, yeah, I didn't know we were doing something original here. And the mind well, thing, I think a lot of is unique. A lot of. Well, I think I think a lot of people, particularly uh, of my age now. Uh, they uh, came across the film on on cable TV on like USA Up All Night and you know late night television, which is where I first saw the film. Now here we are on these uh, uh, on uh, uh, look at that. I th you have no idea how scary this is. <laughs> That thing's barreling sometimes at 30 miles an hour. Wow. Just to get to the place where we want to start shooting, you know? It's, uh, and the thing is, these are all, this is all old gear, you know? I don't think miners uh, work on this basis anymore. But there's a cable, mm -hmm. they're, they're cable cars. And if that cable snaps, it winds right through the tunnel like a razor blade and cuts off everybody's head. It's the most amazing thing. It's happened wow. before. Well, I'm, I'm glad that didn't happen. Yeah. yeah. Well, I'm talking with miners. You know, I, I don't think there are too many actors are to go down there. You'd have yeah. to be pretty crazy. <laughs> I like these scenes. But I've... They're, they're, I like the atmosphere, like the dark and the light. 
uh, the interplay between dark and light during the whole movie uh, when when we're underground. I think that's yeah. that's pretty cool. It's lit really well. Yeah. Um, it's it's it. In this edition, I mean, I watched it for years on an old copy, like a VHS copy that um, had been played so many times. It was kind of showing its age, but now seeing yeah. it in the special edition. Um, you really get to see the, how well it was lit and, and put together in those scenes. Oh, it's funny because we couldn't use that many lights. Mm -hmm. The heat from the, the arc lamp was, uh, was really quite dangerous. And they had to be shut off all the time. So, like, a lot of times the, the, the scene was self-lit, like using a lantern, for example. Mm-hmm. That turned out really well uh, on film. It turned out really well. Rodney Gibbons, who was the cinematographer, um, I thought he was very good. He uh, he really knew how to frame a shot and follow through on it and, and keep it alive. It's um, it's a technique that uh, you know not everybody has. You know, I thought he was a really good uh, cinematographer. <laughs> There's there's the X. Go. This is so fun. See, there she is. Wait a sec here. Oh, look at this. I don't even remember this. Oh yeah, okay, I remember this. Oh, here's Rob. I forget his last name right now. Oh, there's my ex-wife screaming, <laughs> going crazy. <laughs> <laughs> she had a role in the in the previous movie that I'd done as well. But you really get a, a sense of claustrophobia and of you know being sort of uh, you know cut off and and lost in this maze when you're when you're down in the mine. You know, I I have a fear of claustrophobia. So believe me, a lot of that was very real for me. Mm. And I, I'm, a, I'm a real chicken when it comes to heights too. Oh, same here. Yeah, fuck that shit. <laughs> <laughs> I don't, I've, I've been in coal mines and in caves, and, it, and it, it's a really weird realization to when you realize that you're however many feet under the earth and you know what I mean when they turn the lights out it's a kind of blackness that um, you know it's the deepest blackness so it, it's yeah, a really, it really weird realization is. yeah but at the same time it's still quiet and peaceful yeah, that's I've been true. in many caves mm. too a little eerie in quietness <laughs> yep. yes yep. this is so funny Oh, look at that, eh? Uh, here we are. That's the real, that's the actual mine itself. And that's the car I was telling you about. 11 minutes down, 11 minutes up. Unbelievable. Wow. And you wow. know, it's just a cable, right? Holding a cage. Mm -hmm. That's the real thing. It was, that's a good shot, actually. I, I didn't, I don't know if I remember that shot. Well, could you imagine if the, if the cage and the cable broke and you had to climb up or climb down with th just on the ladder? My goodness. Uh, when, when I'll tell you about that ladder scene when we get to it. Where the hell were you? That was something else, boy. Yeah. Uh, this is so cool seeing Keith. Watch your head. Watch your step. Okay, here comes the hero. <laughs> It's all abandoned now. Mm -hmm. Oh, Harry Warden. Oh, that was good. <laughs> good gag. <laughs> Actually, he's like that in real life. Alf was always like that. He was always clowning around. So he was well cast. He was a hoot. When we did gas together, he was so funny. Yeah, you know, we we all had really good laughs together. 
and we we enjoyed working with each other, and we respected each other. I mean, you know, it was very uh, it was very tight. Yeah. You don't you don't always get that in a in a cast. Now I'm just into the movie. <laughs> oh, look at this. Oh, yeah, Harriet. She was a very good actress. I think this was the first thing she'd ever done, and she was just excellent. <laughs> okay. Lime powder. Hey, you guys, how come Mike and Harriet have This is all real, right? This is all happening in the actual mine. Okay, this is bad what happened here. You know, every time he hit the, uh, he, he took that pickaxe and he hit the, the side of the wall there. If you watch carefully, every once in a while you'll see a spark. And they, they didn't see that happening while, while we were shooting it. But I saw it when he was coming towards me at the end when we had the fight. And I saw the sparks and I just, I freaked. <laughs> That's more than enough to ignite the tunnel. Yeah. Yeah. Like you'd be a real, you'd be a fool to like light a lighter, for example. And, and this, uh, one little spark like that can do it. We were actually very fortunate that there wasn't a big gas buildup during that period. Uh, we had one big gas buildup where we all had to evacuate, but that was only, it only happened once. Very worth Well, guys, it's not a. It, it may not be a moose head, but you do uh, have a schlitz. this this schlitz is 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 for you, Paul. Cheers. Okay. <laughs> I'll just drink my coffee. <laughs> I only go hardcore. I got some Coke Zero. Yeah. Well, only for the only for the badass plays. Still rocking the middle of yellow. <laughs> what I you drinking over there, Barry? I'm rocking a little bit of Italian roast decaf coffee. Oh, oh. decaf! Classic up the joint. The night is young, decaf. my brothers. The night is young, my brothers. The night is young. <laughs> decaf. <laughs> my ears are ringing, dude. What's going on? That's <laughs> like drinking near beer. What's the point? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Exactly. <laughs> Oh, we got to get the hell out of here, eh? He's back. And I mean, check out the check out the stash, man. I mean, that's a rocking stash you had back in the day, you know? Yep. That is legit. Yeah. Yeah, and that was real too. Well, you were on set. Did you ever see a guy in the miner suit and like it scared the shit out of you by accident? <laughs> that ever happened? <laughs> Somebody in a minor suit that didn't belong to the cast? No. <laughs> no. Well, either or, but someone who was playing like a trick on you, probably. Oh, well, yeah. Well, that would be a foolish thing to do. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think that's one of the. I think that's one of the. I think that's one of the charms of the movie is the you know the killer's got a very unique, very cool you know look with the minor helmet and you know the sound of the breather and you know the pickaxe. Yeah. And, yeah. Yeah, that, that breather stuff's pretty good. Well, you know, it's the Darth Vader kind of thing, eh? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah definitely plays on the Darth Vader look and feel. Uh, oh. oh, no, here they are. This was a good scene to look at. God, that was so weird. <laughs> they got screwed. Definitely. <laughs> yeah, oh, very good. <clears throat> You see, Keith is actually a comic actor. Uh, that's 
most the most of his uh, the stuff that he did in movies and television was was comedy, and uh, he was really good at playing uh, curly. You know, he was always doing, you know, that. Oh yeah. In between scenes, you know, he was really really funny. But uh, I think this is his first major dramatic role. In another film, actually, Mahalka's first. This was Mahalka's second film only. His first film I had something to do with a motorcycle gang, and Keith was in that as well. I think it was also a comedy, a comedy motorcycle gang. I, I don't know. I didn't see the movie, and I can't remember what it is. Another movie that Keith was famous for was a movie called Meatballs. Yep. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh, yeah. Meatballs. Yeah. Well, Keith was the fat kid who ate all the uh, hot dogs. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> it was a little different yeah. back then. Yeah. Yeah. Ah, uh, poor Keith. He got nailed. The girl in the red dress there, I can't remember, I can't remember her name right now, but um, she actually had a pretty good career. Her sister was uh, semi-famous here in Canada, uh, and then she got her own television series. She was a good little actress. That was only her first yeah. major... I think Laurie's pretty good, much better than I thought. Yeah, she's a good actress. Mm -hmm. No, that's pretty good stuff. Yeah, I like it. <laughs> uh oh. Oh, is this where I'm going to get hit in the gut with that log? <laughs> Yeah, I think so, yeah. yeah. Oh. oh yeah, she really smacked her there, too. Oh, <laughs> it's only... That was kind of hard to keep up, this thing about Harry Warden's down here. I mean, we knew he wasn't. <laughs> yeah. You know. On the other hand, we weren't totally sure, but I mean, all the cast members were accounted for, so it was like, you know. Yeah, I mean, it's kind of cool that even the cast didn't know who the killer was or if it was Harry Warden or not until, you know, right at the very end. I mean, that's pretty cool. I was kind of hoping it was me. Did that mean they had to shoot the film in sequence or did they shoot out of sequence? No, no, not at all. No, no. But the ending was shot at the end. Okay. okay. Um, but the rest of the movie, no. We shot it uh, all over the place. All, you know, all the mining, all the scenes in the mine had to be done all together. We only had the mine for like, I don't know, three weeks or something. And it was such a hassle to shoot down there, you know, so they wanted to get a, Okay, this is where he, he really, really whacks me. <laughs> <laughs> oh! Now, was that styrofoam or was that real? No, that was real. And that reaction, what the f <laughs> <laughs> That was real, too. So hard, you wicked me. <laughs> I don't think that was in the script. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think what the fuck was in the script. That's right. He just hit so hard, I had a real, a real reaction. <laughs> he was really enthusiastic, you know? Yeah. <laughs> Doing some method acting there. Acting, but... I remember the first time I saw that scene in a crowded theater, and and when I got hit and I swore like that, everybody laughed in the theater. I thought, oh well, that worked. <laughs> yeah. This isn't bad. Eh? He's got a wig on, and it, 
it, it's pretty good wig too. I mean, he's got a lot of hair under there. I'd but, never but, noticed that. But that all was the way down to his. Yeah, I mean, he had long. He has longer hair than I do. And he, he often wore it in two long braids, you know, like a like a native. So, what's it like, Paul, watching yourself in a movie that you made thirty was it thirty four years ago? Well, you know, I haven't seen it in a long time, so it's kind of fun watching it this time. I have to admit, and especially with you with you guys, because you you have such uh, a different uh, you know varied reactions and 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 responses to what you're seeing. And it's kind of cluing me into um, some of the scenes that I, you know, I don't know. I, I maybe I just didn't appreciate as much as I do now. I don't know about looking at myself. That's not, <laughs> I, you know, I, I can do without that. But I mean, I, I, ne I never really looked like that, like in real life. You know, I mean, I would never wear a haircut like that. <laughs> When I first started acting, I looked much the the way I am right now, only only with a, a dark black beard and dark mm. black hair. I started going gray when I was around 29. Oh, this scene here, this was this was hell. <laughs> this is a How high vertical. How guys on the ladder? This is a vert this is um, a set piece, okay? It's oh, a vertical ladder that is greased and with pouring water coming down from the top and steam rising from the bottom. That w that was so slippery. The whole ladder was only about 25 feet high, but 25 feet is uh, is pretty high when you're on a vertical yeah. ladder and it's all greased. So you're slipping all the time. You have to go up and down, and each time, like every time we're going up, we actually have to start from the bottom again. And then we have to hold on like this. And they're in heels. Um, were they trying to kill you during the shoot? Or? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> this, one, or... this was really difficult. Staying vertical like that for uh, long periods of time, it's really hard to make that climb, you know. After about the twentieth time, I don't know if I had the stamina for it. I was, I was just shaken. Well, and especially when you're watching the movie in high definition, you can see just the water like oozing down, uh, you know, the, the wood. And you, yeah. Yeah, it may have been a pain at the time, but it's really effective. Even if you're only <laughs> eight feet up, if you fell, you'd really hurt yourself because it's, it's like. Oh. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's a concrete floor. It's a, a, a steel ladder. Oh, it was just weird as hell. <laughs> and then we had to use a real ladder so that it blended into the mine, real vertical ladder in the mine itself. Oh, we got a little bit of leg there. Eh? Mm hmm. <laughs> kind of cool. Indeed. Yeah, look at this. That's pretty good. Yeah, you see how wet it is and, and mucky? Yeah. That was, just, that was too much. What time of year were you shooting there? Uh, it was cold. So, oh, it was September. September, okay. Yeah, because I had my 31st birthday in the middle of the shoot. And uh, I my my birthday's in the middle of September, or no, near the end of September. Mm -hmm. I can't remember my own birthday. <laughs> <laughs> to be honest, in that area, it could be August, but it's pretty cold sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's pretty cool. You know, the mine was weird because sometimes it was cool, and sometimes it got like really kind of humid in there. And it always was, uh, all, there are all these smells, you know. Right. There's odors from the walls, from the coal, from the lime, from from uh, mildew. 
very authentic experience, you know. Yeah. yeah. I don't remember. Oh, really? We should have got a medal for doing this part. Uh, Paul, I have a question for you, sir. Uh, yep. Did you save? Did you save any props or souvenirs from the shoot? No, you know, I wish I had, um, but no, I didn't. I don't. I don't remember saving anything from that film. Because hmm. I think uh, Bill Affleck it's actually to took home. Best, so. but I. What? Uh, Neil Affleck actually took home the minor helmet and uh, battery pack, so he's still got that. I, I, you broke up there, so I couldn't hear you proper. Oh, uh, Neil Affleck took home the uh, uh, the minor helmet and lot and battery pack, so he's still got that. He does, eh? Well, yep. for the longest time, I had a miner's, uh, I had the, the, the face mask, the gas mask with the and everything, but I didn't have mm -hmm. it from the movie, I don't think. I used to go, uh, sometimes oh. I go out on Halloween, I go out as uh, Harry Warden. Ah, <laughs> cool. Oh, cool. Very cool. Why not? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I don't do that anymore, though. <laughs> Besides, he couldn't put a mask over his beard. It would just look too weird. <laughs> <laughs> it's too bad they didn't approach you to, to, you know, at least do a cameo in the in the remake. I think that would have been really cool. Definitely. Yeah. Well, you know, I mean, if Mahalka didn't know about the remake, and I didn't know about the remake. You know, they didn't tell us. Uh -huh. They didn't tell us they were doing it. I thought that was really uh, unfortunate because it was the same executive producer. Um, I don't know why. I, I didn't understand that. It was a total surprise to me. It's sad, too, to hear that they kind of slapped together those interviews at the end. I mean, it's a great set. This is yeah, a good movie. Yeah, I, but it would have been nice to put some time and effort are, into it. And, yeah, yeah. People are always asking me about that, you know? That's yeah, too bad. Yeah, it seems like that portion of the DVD, half of it is about My Bloody Valentine 81 and other slasher movies of that era, and then like the whole last half of it is just promoting the remake. It so. was just a commercial. I remember at the time watching it, and I was like, I love the, the transfer of the film, I love seeing the deleted scenes, but the a lot of the special you know, the special features were just a commercial. Yeah. 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 I like this scene, too. Yeah, and the remake doesn't hold anywhere near a candle to this film. Yeah, not at all. No, no way. Going from just right down to like the setting, like wherever they filmed it, somewhere in the states, I don't know where. It just none of it lines up. Yeah, I think they filmed it in, in Pittsburgh or Pencil somewhere in Pennsylvania, maybe Pittsburgh. I don't yeah, know. Yeah, I think you're right. Yeah. But the remake. Yeah. 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 And it's a nice place, you know. They show some of the scenery. It's nice, but it just didn't have that. I don't know. There's something about this setting kind of disconnects you from reality a little bit. It's like you're in this uh -huh. like kind of desolate little quiet mining town kind of thing. That place. Yeah. Very, yeah. You know, it's funny actually. You asked me earlier how I feel about watching it now. One thing I uh, I see differently is that I I can't really look at myself. Than I realized. He really puts her guts into this. Mm -hmm. You like you cut up. Here's the bad guy. You you cut up there a little bit, Paul. Do you mind uh, repeating that? Okay, wait. A could, could you? This, is this the fight scene now, coming up? Yes. Yeah. Yes, this we're is, on to the fight. Oh boy. Yeah. yeah. This was really. This is exactly what it looks like. It's really happening. 
Can you imagine? Hear it? Look at that. I can't even. I, oh, my goodness. That thing is going about 15, 20 miles an hour down the mine. We're on an incline. We're going straight down. There's Neil swinging away at me. Well, actually, uh -huh. yeah. Was he in the miner's outfit at this point? I beg pardon? Was that Neil inside the miner's outfit fighting with you? Uh, let me think. Uh, yeah, I think it was, actually. Okay. Well, there were three guys. There was the stuntman who played uh, my role um, in, like, to do it in, in real-time action. And then there was the stuntman who played uh, the Harry Warden murderer. Okay, this one, this is really scary here. You might see a spark. Yep, yeah, yeah, I can see him. Okay, and that was for real. I couldn't believe it. You know what they did? This was really stupid. What they did is they didn't want to uh, uh, jeopardize my life with a real pickaxe. <laughs> so what they did is they made one out of fiberglass, which was a really uh. dumb idea because the fiberglass swings faster and it's <laughs> just as lethal, <laughs> you know? <laughs> and I... I, I was it was coming so fast at me. Okay, this is in a, a set, this part here. Pretty good set. And here comes yeah. okay, I'm gonna mash into something. Uh, I like I like this. This was fun, kinda. Oh boy, yeah, look at this. This is uh, hundreds of pounds of stuff. <laughs> and it's gonna okay, bang goes. Now I'm gonna hit Somebody's going to hit the pole or something, and it's going to crack. I can't remember. Oh, he's got a knife. I forgot about that. There's nothing like another actor wielding a knife at you. <laughs> <laughs> no. Uh, here we are. So the game is up. Yes. Oh. I love this flashback. Love this flashback. Yeah, you know, that was done well. The little boy was very good. Yeah. Okay. Oh, here comes the cave-in. Just some styrofoam, Paul. No problem. <laughs> <laughs> 200 pounds Just 100 of styrofoam. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I was, get, I was glad to get out of there. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, here comes the really funny part. Now, he had a hard time keeping a straight face on this one. Oh, that, I, that, oh. Then I think I got it wrong, eh? Is that only in the? Um, that might be in the the deleted scenes. In the deleted scenes. Um, I, yeah, we it, I, yeah. Where is it? In, I think he. No, I don't. They call him back. That's right. It? They find him. Yeah, and they no, call him back. A, yeah. My bad. Then he pulls. Yeah. His arm's stuck, and then he cuts it off, and there's his arm. I thought it was her that. Yeah, I thought it was her that pulled it out. Oh, yes, yeah, she comes running back. Yeah, yeah. Why? I don't know. She, she still has feelings for him. He's alive. She still loves him. Oh, we lost Paul. Thank you, Google. We didn't get to see the arm, of course, because it's theatrical. Mm -hmm. Right, yeah. But I love his I love his laugh here at the end. Oh yeah. Yeah. It's like the Joker. Yeah. Be my bloody Valentine. <laughs> ha 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 ha. It's creepy. Now for the salad. Uh, yes, and of course, and of course, 
This this was one of the slasher movies of the eighties that had its own it's theme song, song over the closing credits. Yeah. 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 <laughs> oh geez, Louise, that was that's a classic right there. Hopefully, Paul can rejoin us, <laughs> and we'll uh, we'll wrap things up with him. But um, yeah, what a classic flick! What an awesome flick! My bloody Valentine. Yeah. Great stuff. I love catching it every year. Yep. yep. Got to got to watch it every year around uh, around Valentine's Day. Just got to. Yep. What was uh, maybe you guys can talk about the first time you saw this film and your your initial yeah. thoughts? Yeah, I was actually getting ready to ask that. Yeah, that's that's a good question. Well, do you remember the first time you saw the film, Rahu? Yeah, um, probably around high school. Um, you know, my buddies and I were watching a lot of horror films and, you know, going to our parents' places on the weekends with stacks of these movies and just, like, watching them all night kind of thing. And uh, my my buddy's dad, his his dad is also from Sydney Mines kind of thing, and he was like, well, have you ever seen, you know, My Bloody Valentine? We said, no, I never even heard of it kind of thing. And he was like, Jesus, it was filmed where, you know, where I grew up and all this. We're like, what? And it was such a weird thing, you know. We so we we found a copy of it, like I said, an old beat up VHS, and threw it on, and, and oh, here, we are. here we are. There he is. Oh, hey, how what back. happened there? It crashed again, just at the end too. Yeah. Oh well. Well, we were yeah. we were we were we were reminiscing about the first time that we that we saw the film, and Rahu was telling us about the first time he saw the film. Go ahead, man. Yeah, I was just saying, you know, we, we were, you know, watching these stacks and stacks of horror movies and one of our my buddy's dad said, you know, you got to see this one. It's, it was filmed in Sydney Mines where I grew up and all this. And we were co completely floored that a movie was made in the area, period. <laughs> I think the only other movie made after that was uh, Margaret's Museum. It was kind of a big production that went that went through there. Oh, and Squanto was a big one, too. Um, there's a, a big uh, fortress of Lewisburg. Um, where some filming does happen and stuff like that, but I, we were floored that a horror movie was made so close. And I remember we watching we're watching the movie and seeing all these places that I've seen, you know, I don't know how many times. Uh, it was just it was a really strange experience, but it was also so cool. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. What what year was the first time you saw it? Um, I would say probably around the mid to late nineties. I'd say like uh, ninety seven, maybe somewhere in that area. Is that right, eh? Yeah. So it would have been out for a good. A good 15 years, I'd say, at that point. Yep. <laughs> yeah, pretty interesting. Yeah, yeah. What, what about what about you, Mike? Do you remember the first time you saw My Bloody Valentine? Uh, yeah. Uh, see, I was 12 or 13 when it was released, and I remember Fangoria magazine was just coming out around that time, and I remember uh, you reading about it in the magazine, and then in '83 when I started taking guitar lessons, there was this weird uh, music store that rented movies and sold music cassettes and they sold instruments and gave lessons and stuff so it was a really weird hodgepodge of a store well I rented it from there because we got a Betamax in like 83 so I think it was sometime around 83 when I saw it the first time cool cool what about you Barry uh, the first time I saw uh, My Bloody Valentine I had actually already seen uh, Friday the 13th and Texas Chainsaw and so, like a lot of us, I was on this search as a kid. I was just like, "What? What is the scariest movie you've ever seen?" I asked an aunt of mine. I said, "You know, I've seen all these. What is the scariest movie you ever seen?" And she said, "Ultimately, it was the one. She said, I don't remember the title, but it was the one where they were putting the hearts in the Valentines." And so, <laughs> and said, well, okay. And so, through deduction, I found it at the local VHS rental store, and lo and behold, it was just a great little plastic to find. Man, I really enjoy this film. Watch it every year. What about yeah, you, Stingray? Um, unfortunately, I didn't see this one until it came out on DVD, the the original DVD. Um, for some reason, none of the local VHS places around me uh, carried the film. You know how it was back then. You know they you know picked and chose which ones they decided to carry or not. So, and it, unfortunately, it was a little later on before I was able to watch it. What were you gonna say, Mike? I was going to say that, you know, that was during the big slasher craze, so of course I'm a huge Halloween fan and Friday the 13th, and I had to see every single slasher film that was ever released. And, um, you know, My Bloody Valentine definitely stuck out as one of the better ones. It's definitely one of my favorites to this day. What about you, Ork? Uh, well, I've been on YouTube for a long time. It's a good way to find, about, find out about movies that you haven't seen before. 
So I came across uh, Rajo Magnifico and his channel, and he's like, all right, got the special edition DVD and the remake's coming out soon. So I got the got the DVD, watched it, and it was epic. That was 2009, and then, but also with that, I was like, okay, I need to see The Prowler, My Bloody Valentine, The Burning. I had like a list set up. I was like, all right, I'm gonna watch all of these. And, <laughs> and they all released yeah. around the same time there too, like a different editions. Yeah, and, yeah, it was kind yeah. of a really great time. Yeah. yeah. You know yeah. that. Uh, the uh, Go ahead, Paul. It was on YouTube, like the entire movie. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh. And what happened was I just I discovered that, so I I posted it on my site, and on my Facebook page, and uh, so I, I guess a few hundred people <laughs> tuned into it and watched the movie for free on YouTube, and I guess uh, Paramount pulled it, <laughs> or because yeah. uh, about one month later it was gone. Uh, it's in the frown for me <laughs> for me the first time I saw it was probably on like USA up all night I'm pretty sure it was something like that I saw it on cable television and loved it and rented it from the video store and watched it uncut there and loved it and got the old DVD and got the new DVD and got the Blu-ray. So, yeah, it's one of those movies that just, you know, every year around Valentine's Day I have to watch. I introduced my girlfriend to it and, you know, she likes it. And so it's just uh, it's just a classic, bottom line, a classic. So. I've been trying to sit down and watch it with my mom. Um, and my aunt a couple of times. I brought it home a couple of times. And I think it would be hysterical to watch that with them and be like, where is this place? You know what I mean? Where is that store? You know, things like that. Like, cause it's, it's, you know, it would probably be a flashback well, and then like big time, right? Well, I actually let my boss at work uh, borrow it and watch it a few years ago, and she brought it back to me, and I was like, so, so what did you think? And she goes, it was cute. <laughs> so. That was a nice way of telling you that she thought that was pretty uh, pretty silly, I'd say. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, if you go for Valentine's Day, if you go to my uh, my Facebook site and you go to my albums, you'll find my uh, my Bloody Valentine uh, album, um, mm -hmm. in photos rather. And you'll see there's an album there of my bloody Valentine pics from the movie. Mm -hmm. But there's also a bunch of Valentines that I did um, for Valentine's Day from the movie. Like I using different pictures and artwork that I I did myself. Oh, okay. So I, oh, I, cool. That's become quite popular. So you can you can take them and then print them up and use them if you want. Definitely. They're, I just added you as a friend by the way. <laughs> yeah, cool. Yeah, I got inspired last year, you know. I've heard that well, let's see what people tell me that the first time they, they saw my bloody Valentine was with their mum. <laughs> <laughs> I always thought that was sweet. It's interesting, yeah. That's interesting. Well, let me see what people have been commenting on in the video uh, watching the movie with us. John Avenger says, um, he says, hey, Raho, it's good to see you again after so long. Uh, he also says this this film proves that with a low budget you can do so much when you have imagination. He also hopes that we do an April Fool's Day live commentary someday. So yeah, I that could definitely will. be in the works. Uh, Ev Leopard says he loves My Bloody Valentine. It's one of his all-time favorite movies. Um, our buddy R&R &R Whore Hunter has been watching along with us. He's actually been doing some house cleaning while watching the commentary. So interesting choice, but it works. Multitasking, multitasking. Multitasking, very smart. Uh, our buddy Evan Costain's been watching with us tonight. How are you, buddy? And our friend uh, Christopher Walker's also been watching. So, very, very cool. Thank you guys for for watching with us. We appreciate it. Um, so, what are what are you up to these days, Paul? What am I up to? Yeah. Well, I'm kind of a recluse, and um, my focus is really on. Uh, environmental activism, animal rights, human rights, and uh, and writing. I do a lot of writing. I, I keep threatening to come out with a book, which may happen <laughs> if I can figure out what I'm writing. <laughs> um, cool. It, you know, it's not easy. Like, I have a lot of stuff, and I have to kind of put it together and figure out what have I written here. But um, I've been working on it for over uh, almost two years now. 
So, yeah, I, I basically call myself a writer and an activist. And I, uh, I you know, I, I, I watch a lot of movies more than anything in terms of like, <laughs> television or whatever. And in terms of entertainment, I just watch a lot of films. Is uh, my buddy Valentine on, um, what's that, uh, on Netflix? You guys know? I, f I think it was at one point. I don't know if it's still on there or not. I know it was, was at one point. Check before the show because I was thinking about watching it on Netflix. Um, but uh, it was definitely on there. I don't know if it's come down um, when they switch it, the movies out. Yeah, it wasn't there as of Monday because I looked for it. I was going to watch it on Netflix. Okay. Cool. Yeah, so anyways, that's, that's what I'm about these days. That's uh, really what I'm concentrating on. and My entertainment style is uh, basically movies on the big screen TV and and that's about it, really. Keep do you write pretty... fiction, Paul? Or I beg your pardon? Do you write fiction, or? Well, I haven't been. That's not what I've been concentrating on. But um, I'm kind of veering in that direction. I was, you know, you can take a, something that you want to say and cloak it in a story, um, so that like I'm not interested in writing a memoir. A lot of people want me to write a memoir, but I don't. I don't. I don't think that's interesting enough. But if I can cloak it in a story that is removed from myself but still has the essence of what I've been through, then I could probably do it. So I'm kind of I'm kind of I'm, I'm struggling with that. <laughs> it's the only way I can put it. And it is a struggle. Right. Writing I've never written a book before and uh, I've done a lot of writing. I've written scripts, I've written plays. Uh, I've written for television. I've done all kinds of stuff, but I've never sat down and tried to put a book together and make a kind of like a, a literary statement of any kind. And that's you know that, that's not so easy. I got to tell you. Yeah. yeah. I really admire writers well, a lot. You know. Well, we definitely wish you luck with uh, with whatever you do in the future, with your writing and, and all your activism and or activism, I should say, activism. Sorry, and uh, th thanks so much for joining us tonight, man. We really appreciate it. We all had a blast. Um, I know everybody watching at home had a great time, and uh, just thanks a lot for joining us, man. It was an awesome, uh, awesome experience. Yeah, yeah it, actually, it was a very pleasurable experience with you guys. And I just wanted to ask you if um, so. Is this available on YouTube afterwards? To 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 yes. Yeah. Yep. Well, that's interesting. Yep. Okay. So because a lot of people didn't understand it when I when I posted it on Facebook, like how to access it. So be sure I'll, to, uh, I'll, I'll send you the link. I'll, I'll definitely send you the link. Okay, good. All right, guys, a pleasure. Thank you very much. Thank you much. very much, Paul. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Take it easy, buddy. Hey, thanks ciao. so much. Ciao. And uh, yeah, I want to just thank again everybody at home who watched the film along with us. Uh, we really appreciate it, and uh, yeah, it's been a, been a blast. Uh, My bloody Valentine, awesome movie. If you didn't get to watch it with us live, definitely uh, sit down and pop it in this weekend over over Valentine's weekend. And uh, yeah, great film. Thanks for joining us as always. Next week we're taking next week off, and then we're going to we're going to be coming back at you the week after that for our big Oscars roast show. So definitely keep your eyes peeled for that one. Uh, that was a lot of fun. So yeah, and uh, thanks for joining Sunday, us tonight. Right? A week from Sunday, yes. Yep. And uh, thanks for joining us tonight too, Rahul. We haven't seen you in a while. We've missed you. Hope I you've know, been doing I miss well. You guys too. I'm trying to I'm trying to make it, but these are just nuts. <laughs> <laughs> But if I can make it, I always want to be here. And I couldn't believe, I can't even believe this just happened. Like, really, I can't believe this just happened. I can't believe I just sat down and I went with Paul Kelman and watched the, My Body Valentine. It's just blowing my mind right now. So Definitely another huge I, highlight I, of the I factory. Am absolutely, like, I don't know, nerding out like crazy right now. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, too, bad, too bad Cole couldn't make it tonight because I know he's a big fan of the movie too. But um, yeah. Yeah, I'm sure he'll check out. He, I'm sure he'll check out the archived version. So. For sure. But, uh, yeah. yeah. Very cool. Stuff. But yeah, thanks. Thanks to all you guys for joining me tonight. And uh, yeah, so we'll we'll be off next week, but then we'll come back. Uh, 
the week following that on Sunday for the big Oscars roast. So we'll see you guys then. Have a great week. Take care. Have a great Valentine's Day. Till next time, take it easy. Peace. What are they saying, Canadian, I hope? Peace out. There we go. <laughs>